Hello, everyone. This is uh, this today's session is called Fight Back. Thank you for joining us. Um, this presentation will be from 10:45 to 12, and here I have Joanna, who will introduce herself and her colleagues. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Joanna Albo, and I'm a health program manager and uh, chief of the local programs and statewide units for the California Department of Public Health, the Office of Oral Health. So we're really excited to be here today. And on behalf of my colleagues and myself, I would like to thank you for inviting oral health to the table. As former Surgeon General C. Everett Koop said, you're not healthy without good oral health. Uh, next slide, please. All right, we're going to talk about dental caries. So dental caries, commonly referred to as tooth decay or cavities, is the most prevalent chronic health problem of children in California and the largest single unmet health need afflicting children in the United States. It is also preventable. Dental caries can affect children's growth, compound certain systemic diseases, and result in significant pain and potentially life-threatening infections. Caries can impact child's speech development, their learning ability, school attendance, social development, and self-esteem as well. Historically, California and some southwestern states have been known to have high prevalence of tooth decay. In the last survey, California was next to Arkansas from the bottom. As you can see in the slide, tooth decay prevalence for California's third grade children was 71% in 2004. And that's compared to, to states like Colorado and New York at 47 and 45 percent. The difference, these states implemented public health interventions, including school-based dental programs. Next slide, please. But I do have some good news. The Office of Oral Health recently conducted and published the third grade California Smile Survey report. This report presents findings from the California Smile Survey, a population-based representative survey of over 12,000 third grade children conducted during the 2018-19 and 2019-20 school years. As you can see, we have made some progress towards our goals of reducing caries experience and untreated tooth decay. Tooth decay declined by 10 percentage points and untreated tooth decay declined by seven percentage points. We have also increased the number of children with dental sealants. Dental sealant prevalence increased by nine percentage points. So this decline in tooth decay prevalence is clinically meaningful. It shows that California is moving in the right direction. Several initiatives undertaken since the last survey may have con contributed to this improvement in oral health. Since 2007, several water systems, including the Metropolitan Water District of Southern California, began providing fluoridated water, resulting in 59.3% of the population receiving fluoridated water. That's up from 27.1%. The percentage of children under 21 who were enrolled in uh, Medi-Cal Dental program and received dental services increased to 48% in 2018, and that's from 28% in 2006. In addition, the following policies and system level changes also occurred during this time frame. So the implementation of the kindergarten oral health assessment as part of the school entrance uh, requirement. I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a, in a few minutes. Um, promotion of dental screenings, fluoride varnish, and anticipatory guidance during well child visits by the American Academy of Pediatrics and age one dental visit recommendations. Um, the release of the California Dental Association Foundation's 2010 Oral Health During Pregnancy and Early Childhood. It's an evidence-based guidelines for health professionals and also training of dental professionals to provide dental care for children under six years of age. We also had the implementation of the Affordable Care Act, uh, which had increased dental benefits, um, the coverage, the affordability, and the integration. And also, our, our Medi-Cal dental program's implementation of recommendations from the Little Hoover Commission's report, including the 2015 Medicaid Dental Transformation Initiative to increase 
preventive dental visits. So this is all great news, um, but it's still sad to know that uh, over half of our third graders have cavities. Um, so we have lots more work to do. Next slide, please. Um, with this uh, SMILE survey, when we viewed the data by region, we found that the oral health status of children varied by region. So children from the Central Valley, that you can see on the map there, had the highest prevalence of tooth decay at 75.9%, and untreated tooth decay at 29.7%. Overall, the Bay Area had the most favorable outcomes. Um, they had a prevalence of tooth decay at 45%, um, untreated tooth decay around 16%, and sealants were um, almost 45%. Uh, next slide, please. So the variation in the prevalence of tooth decay reflects some community conditions that we see in our state. So the map uh, on the left is the Healthy Place Index. So the Healthy Place Index is a powerful new tool developed by the Public Health Alliance of Southern California. It assists in exploring local factors that predict life expectancy and comparing community conditions across the state. It ranks community conditions from least healthy to most healthy. So you can see, unfortunately, the Central Valley communities have the least favorable conditions. And it kind of reflects what we see in the data that we found on the map on the right. So um, the Office of Oral Health is taking action to mitigate the effect of socioeconomic factors. And one intervention is to promote school-based and school-linked dental programs. Next slide, please. So what we know is that more than 60% of third grade students in California have experienced tooth decay. And researchers have found that dental problems are the leading reason why California miss school and struggle to learn. Approximately 440,000 children missed at least one day of school due to a dental problem in 2018 and cost California school districts approximately $85 per day for every student absent. Next slide, please. So the California Department of Public Health Office of Oral Health has published the California Oral Health Plan which offers the structure for collective action to assess and monitor oral health status and other oral health disparities, prevent oral diseases, increase access to dental services, promote best practices, and advance evidence-based policies. As the leading agency, the Office of Oral Health is implementing the, strand, the plan strategies on the local level statewide. The Office of Oral Health has established local oral health programs in 59 of California's 61 local health jurisdictions. All local oral health programs will implement strategies and activities to decrease tooth decay and untreated tooth decay and increase sealant prevalence. The role of the local oral health programs will be to promote, coordinate, facilitate, and evaluate school dental programs in urban elementary schools with greater than 50% of the students on the free reduced price lunch program and all the rural elementary schools and link these children to a source of dental care. Next slide, please. So our program to reduce tooth decay consists of five components, which are a set of interconnected interventions. The kindergarten oral health assessment that I mentioned earlier sometimes we refer to it as COA, um, is a, uh, the COA requirement is a law. It's AB 1433. It was signed into law in 2006, and it helps schools identify children suffering from untreated dental disease and helps parents establish a dental home for their children. Effective January 1st, 2007, students in their first year in public schools must submit proof of oral health assessments. Uh, fluoridation of community water supplies is the single most effective public health measure to prevent tooth decay. Community water fluoridation benefits everyone, especially those without access to regular dental care. Fluoridation is a powerful tool in the fight for social justice and health equity. 
We also have oral health literacy interventions, and they're designed to help individuals obtain, process, and understand basic oral health information and services needed to make appropriate oral health decisions for themselves and their families. And um, timely, regular dental visits present the opportunity to provide preventive care and offer early treatment. Tooth decay, gum infections, and tooth loss can be prevented in part with regular visits to the dentist. And lastly, community clinical linkages include school dental programs and that my colleague Paula Lee will be dis discussing with you further uh, here in just a moment. So the Office of Oral Health has strategies to also support tobacco cessation and reduce sugar-sweetened beverages intake through campaigns like Rethink Your Drink. And policy systems and environmental changes like toothbrushing programs in early care settings. Next slide, please. So this is the three buckets of prevention by the CDC. So we think of prevention in terms of these three buckets. So bucket one being in, um, you know, traditional clinical prevention, um, increasing preventive dental visits, especially in the Medicaid, uh, Medi-Cal dental program. Uh, bucket three is about community-wide programs like adding fluoride to the drinking water and implementing toothbrushing and Head Start or early education and early care programs, and also increasing or oral health literacy. So bucket two is about the clinical preventive programs and implementing these in settings like schools. So this is our focus today with talking about the school dental programs. Next slide, please. And lastly, in this slide, uh, we wanted to introduce the oral health impact pyramid. You can see on the left side, the down arrow indicates as you move down the pyramid, the reach is greater. So the foundation is a community efforts. Um, and as you move up the levels of the pyramid, the intensity of the services increases. So for instance, they may be receiving more direct services like at the top of the pyramid. Um, but also keep in mind that as we move up the pyramid and increase the intensity of those services, we're increasing costs and we're also reaching fewer children. So today we're focused on the two middle sections um, and these are evidence-based interventions. So I really wanna thank you for your time and your attention. And now I'd like to turn it over to my colleague, Ms. Paula Lee. Thank you, Joanna. My name is Paula Lee. I am also work at the California Department of Public Health in the Office of Oral Health. And I'm the dental hygiene consultant um, for the state of California, the first one, and I've been here for a month. Um, so please uh, give me time to acclimate. Um, I am the lead and coordinator of the school dental programs. So let's shift to talk about how tooth decay affects our children and their learning and education and some solutions to that problem, which um, Joanne has talked about in terms of school dental programs. Next slide, please. Some important facts about oral health and school aged children. Um, so for kindergarten, 40% of kindergartners that um, who enter kindergarten have tooth decay. And um, due to tooth decay, there are other problems um, as well, such as disrupting learning in their education, limits their social experiences, and students who have tooth decay or tooth pain miss approximately 440,000 days of school, as Joanna mentioned. That leads to a $34.7 million annual loss to California school districts. Oral health is the leading cause of school absences, and students with tooth decay in the last six months were four times more likely to have low grade part average, which this in turn has a long-term lifespan negative effect on them. Um, next slide, please. A child's health, healthy teeth are important for their overall health and their ability to learn, to smile, grow due to the inability to eat and focus, um, due to the lack of sleep may be caused by tooth pain. School-based programs um, is, is evidence-based and can help prevent dental decay. Decrease in dental decay and pain equals decrease in absenteeism. And we all can be part of and advocate for our oral health 
education and services for school-aged children. And Karen's disease it, that causes tooth decay is 100% preventable. Um, last week, I was able to attend a webinar by the School-Based Health Alliance on Tuesday, and the panel discussed equity, equity through school-based care, and more specifically, equity through healthcare. One of the ways I feel we can close that health disparity gap among children is supporting and advocating for kids and their oral health. Next slide, please. So this is the pyramid that Joanna was talking about. It is, um, and we are gonna focus on the middle two parts of the pyramid, the school linked and the school based program. And the school linked program is something like screening and COA, as we mentioned, um, counseling and referral and case management. And school based program are like sealants and establishing a dental home. Um, let's go into these a little bit more detail, and we'll talk about three basic models of school dental programs. Next slide, please. So the first model is school screening. So here we have where you could hire a dental hygienist, and she'll use a pen light. She or he will use a pen light and a mouth mirror and assess the children's oral health. In this case, it's called case identification, and we refer them out with a referral management program. So it's you can one way to look at this is you can start with one grade level, say kindergarten. You can hire a dental hygienist or dental hygienist in alternative practice, and you screen a hundred kids per day. So that's kind of like a, a, a basic model. So another one is um, a sealant program. So this is called a school-based program. And sealants are a non-invasive, painless procedure where dental providers apply a coat over grooves of a teeth. So here you can see two pictures. This is um, a first molar and it has grooves. And so we put it like a very non-invasive, very painless process and we seal those teeth. And it's interesting, um, first molars, when kids turn about six, first molars start to erupt. And six-year-olds, as many of you know, have difficulty time keeping, brushing and keeping their teeth clean. So it, we have a goal here to want to place sealants on all first molars. You know, this might be TMI, but I just got a root canal on my first molar because I had a large silver amalgam back in the day. So first molars are our are, are goal to seal. Another uh, model is number three, it's a comprehensive dental program. And that is what we call primary care. It's also school-based. And um, it is where a, you could uh, establish a dental home in a school and we call, and you could get exams, x-rays, cleanings, fillings, and then referral to specialists when needed. So when we're looking at all these three basic models, these are um, all built upon each other and you, they're organic. So you could hybrid them. You could have a school screening and sealant program. Um, you could maybe have just a sealant program or, you know, things like that. But um, so these are very organic way of looking at it. And I know that LA Trust and Esther and Dr. Pong and um, will also kind of go into about what they're doing. So it's exciting. It's an exciting way to look at uh, school-based programs. So how can we start supporting improving kids' oral health? So next slide, please. One way is training nurses in oral health prevention. Um, school nurses can help avoid, you know, kids avoiding mistakes schools a days if they're able to assess and refer them to care prior to tooth pain and uh, tooth decay. So um, there is a toolkit by the Attorney General's office um, where it is a truancy toolkit for nurses and there's a document that's attached and it has two strategies that, um, that could be done for dental. Um, and that will be linked at the end of our, our um, PowerPoint. And then you could also implement oral health education in classroom curriculum. Um, and you could start a school-linked program for screening or uh, support the COA um, law. You could also consider a school-based program, which is what we talked about, the dental sealant program or a comprehensive program. And then you could always refer kids to comprehensive care, to local dental office and virtual dental homes. And finally, next slide, please. Joanna talked about our local oral health programs. This is a little bit more detail about that. It started with Prop 56 taxes and it, we have five-year grant cycle. We are just finishing our first um, grant cycle now in June 20, uh, end of June of next year, and we're just going to start 
our new grant cycle in July of 20, 20, July of 2022. And we have 50, currently we have 59 out of 61 of our local health jurisdictions, and we're hoping to get all 61 next year. So our school-linked and school-based dental programs is one of the objectives of these grants. So partnering with a local oral health program is a great way to kind of um, partner together to create school dental programs. And, and uh, also at the end of our PowerPoint slide, we have um, a link to the directors and leads of these local oral health programs. Next slide, please. So how do we identify schools for dental programs? So the way um, the Office of Oral Health look is we look at equity and health disparities. So untreated carriers with 60% higher, untreated carriers was 60% higher in schools where at least 50% of students qualified for free and reduced meal plan. And these families typically qualify for Medi-Cal and Medi-Cal Dental. At the CDPH and Office of Oral Health, we look at schools with greater than 50% on the free and reduced meal plan and all rural schools due to dental professional shortage areas. We have, so we can look at this chart, we have 1,223 rural schools and 3,403 urban schools with a total of 4,626 schools eligible for, for um, school dental programs. So Dr. Jay Kumar, our dental director of California, has the minimum goal of reaching at least 50% of the 4,626 schools during the next grant cycle. So you might think that this is a lot of schools, but you can really start with looking at maybe instead of 50% reduced um, meals, you can look at maybe schools that are 90% of the students are in the free and reduced meal program. So that's one way to kind of looking at it on a um, scalable process. So next slide, please. So the state of oral health plan and local oral health program goals is our vision is to eliminate oral health disparities. Um, our goal is 10%. So what that means is decreasing tooth decay and untreated tooth decay by 10 percentage points. Um, we want to increase sealant prevalence by 10 percentage points. And at least, like I said, 50% of eligible schools within a dental program for um, the next grant cycle by the end of 2027. We would like 50% of those 4,000 um, schools. So next slide, please. So. This is maybe one way of looking at um, the different three different models of the processes. Um, what, so looking at model number one, a screening program. So what you do is you get passive consent um, for the screening because it's very non-invasive to, you know, to have a pen light and a mirror to look inside a child's mouth. So the so you could get a, a school nurse or a registered dental hygienist or a dental hygienist doctor alternative practice and a care coordinator. So by getting passive consent, you screen and, and provide oral health counseling. You do referral with, our, with your care coordinator, and then you follow up. So let's look at the next model. Look at, uh, next slide, please. And this is a school sealant program. So for um, screening, passive consent is all you need. And then you, you want to have active consent for uh, applying sealants to the kids who, who uh, are identified who need sealants on their first molars. And then you have referral and then the follow-up process. So then you could scale up to the next level, which is number three. And uh, next slide, please. The third model is primary care and comprehensive school-based dental program. So here you could do passive consent or you could just go straight into active consent. So some start with that, like the um, um, last slide. Um, so you could cons you could consent, you could get screening, and then you could give dental exams and x-rays, and then you give them some primary care with fillings and things like that. And then if, if needed for a specialist, then you do referral and you do follow-up. So next slide, please. So I might share a couple examples of school-based programs that have worked and school-linked programs that have worked. And then of course, Esther and uh, Dr. Ma will share more about their experiences as well. So uh, we're gonna talk about San Francisco and Tuolumne County. Next slide, please. So here in San Francisco um, has made a concerted effort using a public health approach and tracked health outcomes. They have promoted policy and system and environmental changes and San Francisco created a partnership and implemented universal screening of kindergarten children. 
this provided them to the data and helped them to link it, it to all 10 essential public health services from assessment to policy development to assurance functions. The prevalence of tooth decay in kindergarten children declined from 60% 60, 60 in 2000 to 32% in 2017 and 2018. As you can see, it declined in all population groups. We are trying to replicate this approach in all counties in California. We are providing funds um, to all local health departments to engage in community, conduct assessment, and develop a plan to mobilize partners to implement interventions. And San Francisco attributed their success partly to the increased referral to, um, to dental offices, local dental offices, and early dental visit rates. Although this has been successful, as you can see, I could, want to point out that disparities still exist, and it does show that school-based, but it does show that school-based oral screening as an essential public health service. Next slide, please. So Tuolumne County and Superintendent of Schools and Smile Keepers Dental Program. So Smile Keepers began providing uh, preventative dental service in Tuolumne County in 1994. At that time, Smile Keepers was operated under the direction of a federally qualified health center and started the program in four local schools in Tuolumne County. The program grew to additional schools and Smile Keepers also received grant fundings to buy a mobile dental van. The mobile dental van was driven to school sites for screening, dental clinics, and signals for children with parent permission, and children needing dental work were referred to our dental clinic for treatment or to, uh, uh, to their dental clinic for treatment or to their local provider. In 1999, the FKT was closing and they sold their van to um, the Tuolumne County, um, to the superintendent of schools. And the Smile Keepers is entirely grant funded. So now they reach about 4,750 schools who are participating in, in, the Tuolumne, in the Tuolumne County Smiles Dental Keepers program. So in closing, educating the whole child um, is what uh, Dr. Pedro Nugent and Dean of USC School of Education discussed in, the, in our uh, seminar last week. And includes health and oral health literacy and school-based healthcare sits at that intersection of health and education. So we definitely want to support schools in the effort of educating the whole child. One of the ways Office of Oral Health feel we can close the health disparity gaps among children by supporting schools and advocating for kids and their oral health. We support schools age children in the oral health and achieving health equity among vulnerable populations and children. And next slide. This is our list of health resources. And um, next slide, thank you. Um, and I'm gonna pass it on to Esther from LA Trust. Thank you, Paula. Thank you, John, for all that great information. My name is Esther Yepes, and I'm a program manager with the LA Trust. And again, I wanna thank you for attending this presentation. And now I would like to share a little bit more information about the LA Trust for anyone on that joined us today. Um, so the LA Trust embraces students' health and education to improve student wellness. The LA Trust focuses on student success. Our main goal is prevention, education, research, we have best practice by doing research on some of the programs that we work with with our students. We have convenings for our students where we, our main goal is for our student health leaders to show what they've done throughout the years. Um, we educate, we emphasize prevention education for our students and at these convenings, we let our students shine. Um, the LA Trust works on supporting LAUSD wellness centers and school-based health centers throughout data-driven outcomes. And I'll share a little bit more about our data with our data exchange. So the LA Trust, um, as I mentioned, we have a few programs with that we work with our students as tobacco sensation. Right now, our big goal is mental health, but we also focus a lot on LAUSD's oral health initiatives. So within LAUSD, we have a comprehensive public oral health approach to meet the oral health needs of students in LAUSD. 
Um, we standardize oral health education, prevention and education across LAUSD students since 2012. We have universal education for teachers, students, and parents. And I wanna really emphasize our parent education. Anytime we do a oral health education at the school, we always wanna focus on the parents. We have seen how important parent education is. Just to emphasize, I always like to say, when parents know better, they do better. If the parents don't know how cavities are formed, a lot of times we see children in, in the classrooms eating or um, just snacks that the parents send them. One time I was in a classroom and the little girl was having a bag of marshmallows and she like, mommy said this is a healthy snack when I asked what a healthy snack was. So if the parents don't know what's causing their children's cavity, they can't prevent it. And like Joanna and uh, Paula mentioned, tooth decay is a disease that can be 100% preventable. And I know from the bottom of my heart that no parent would want a child to be suffering from tooth decay. And that's why I feel like it's so important to educate our parents on what causes tooth decay. Um, also our teachers, our teachers, it's really important to educate them, especially with our little ones. A lot of times the teachers in the classrooms provide snacks for the students. Um, I've seen in the classrooms, big jars of pretzels or even other snacks. And knowing that those pretzels break down into, any starch breaks down into sugar and causes those um, students cavities. So educating our, stu our teachers, our parents, and our students on how cavities are formed, it's really, really important for the LA Trust and our dental program. Um, again, like uh, Joanna was mentioning, we have an oral health program with LAUSD. And in this program, we emphasize our kindergarten students with our kindergarten mandate. So we come into the classroom and educate our students to provide those dental screenings. And throughout LAUSD, we establish dental hubs. Um, LAUSD is divided into local districts. So we have dental referral cards within each of the local districts. And I'll explain a little bit more as our presentation continues. Um, and our case management. So case management is really, really important for us. Once we do our dental screening, LAUSD has a program called Healthy Start. And Healthy Start, they're insurance navigators. They work with it in the schools. And we work really, we work really closely with Healthy Start. So after we do our um, dental screenings, the case management is the most important part. We want to make sure our students are seen by the dentist if they need any services in their mouth. The way we screen our children is with a kindergarten minded form. So one, meaning that the students need an emergency, they need to be seen right away. We, um, we see those students that same day, making sure we call the parents, making sure the child has an appointment, all our twos. We work with our case manager, the Healthy Start, to refer those students. Like I mentioned, we, um, we have referral cards. If the child doesn't have a dentist, we work with Healthy Start to support that child, that family, to get them insurance, to refer them to a dental home. So our, our referral process is really important. And oral health a policy and advocacy. The LA Trust has an oral health advisory board. We meet quarterly for, um, for our advisory boards. Here we're working on policy and we're working on the opt-out consent. So if you guys are interested in joining our oral health advisory board, you can um, leave your email on the comments and I would likely um, send an invitation for our oral health advisory board. And data collection. So the oral health data collection is part of our data exchange. And I have a slide um, a little bit later, so I'll emphasize on our data collection as well. Um, so implication of school performance. In 2012, when the LA Trust started our oral health programs, um, we did a study, and this is where we also found that four, four times uh, students with dental decay are four times more likely to have low grade point average. Um, like Joanna and Paula mentioned, one in three absenteeisms are dental related. And this is something that we hate to see our students miss school from dental pain if they are in class they can't concentrate, they can't pay attention, they're in so much pain. So again, dental disease is preventable. We don't want our students to be missing school related to dental pain. And 2.2 days of school are missed every year, every year due to dental pain. If we can prevent this from happening, we can also save the district. So here we have the amount of students in LAUSD times 2.2 days missed of school. This would save the district over 70 million um, 
in, in loss from these absenteeism. So our number one goal when we go into the schools, we talk to our principals, we explain the importance of oral health, um, and we, we give them this information. If we can prevent these absenteeism, if we can prevent child pain, um, and this is how we go into the schools to emphasize the importance of our oral health programs. Um, so oral health status, again, um, just a little more update, 73% of untreated dental decay um, of un Los Angeles have untreated dental caries. Students with dental decay are four times more likely to have low grade point average. 81% of underserved children in LA need dental care. So this is a high, high number. Um, students without access to dental care are four times more likely to miss school. So we want to prevent this by doing our oral health programs or oral health screenings in schools and within LAUSD. We have so many children that are underserved. Those are the children that we want to um, be able to serve as well. And the LA Trust, we focus on our public health approach. When we um, look into oral health and we have our, our public health approach is focused mostly on our finance and our policy. So we have our triangle here. We have our three different tiers. Um, when we focus on education, we want to have a community-based oral health education. This includes our the toothbrush brushing demonstrations in class, the importance of flossing. We have healthy eating, um, again, water fluoridation, cooking. Even if the students, um, a lot of times they tell us we don't want to drink from the tab, we emphasize with our parent presentations that cooking um, with fluoridated water from tap water and anti-tobacco strategies as well. For our prevention, Joanne um, discussed a bit, Joanne and Paula discussed about the prevention programs, and this is a universal sealant prevention in schools. If we can seal the students' teeth and we can do fluoride varnish, this prevents caries from, um, from happening into our students' teeth. So access to care and the linkage, which I mentioned a bit, working with our Healthy Start program um, and linking our students to the dental homes, to the dental referrals making sure the students are being seen, having a dental home where they can go in case they have a tooth pain or have um, any dental work. We wanna be able to make sure the students have a dental home and prevent those emergency visits as well to the emergency room. And here I just wanna share a little bit about um, the LA Trust Oral Health Screening Programs. So when we go into the classrooms, we do oral health presentations. We teach the students about how to brush and floss. We have uh, an amazing program where we're here. We focus, our, our main focus are our parent volunteers in, within each of the schools is the parent center and we love our parent volunteers. They're amazing. The parent volunteers help us escort the children to and from the classrooms. The parent volunteers help us make sure um, that the children have a lot of times we ask them their name and they won't answer. They're too shy to ask um, our names. And most of the time, the parent volunteers at the school know the children. Um, so they're able to uh, support us with confirming the child's date of birth, their name, um, or the parent's name. So this is just a little flow chart of how our pro dental programs run. After the student is confirmed, um, we go into the oral health education. Here we show this the students a video on how to brush, how to floss. We have our puppets, so we do a brushing demonstration. We do a dry brush um, with the students as well as they're watching the video. We let them brush their teeth. We also emphasize the importance of healthy, um, healthy foods and how cavities are formed. After the students go into the oral health education um, stage, we transfer them over to the provider station where here is the dentist does an oral health screening, they apply fluoride varnish, we have, we complete their referral form and the students are sent back to the classroom. So this whole process of our screening program takes um, about 20 minutes. So the students are in and out of the auditorium, the um, classroom or wherever we're at, we send them back to the classroom. At the end of the day, we give the teacher the referral forms and they, the child goes home with their screening form and a referral card as well. I love these report cards. After we're done with our screening forms, um, we put together these report cards based on the consent forms and we go back to the schools and um, turn these report cards into the principal. The principal loves seeing all the information that is shared on here. 
But what I want to emphasize is the potential day saved. So by us screening these students in the screening, we screened 255 students. Potential day saved from school is 490, 439 days. So the principal um, really, really like when we come back to the schools and we share this information with them. So the LA Trust has a manual. So we have done studies, we have done research on how the um, oral health programs are can be created. So if anyone is on here and is interested in um, starting a dental program at your school, if you're a school nurse, if you're a, um, a provider that's thinking about starting a program in your school, visit our website. The LA Trust has an amazing manual and we have it on our website and you can follow step by step. Um, we have case analysis, we have um, financial analysis of how program costs, how much the program will run. We have um, principal letters on here. We have parent letters in our manual that informs the teachers, the principals, the parents on how the process runs, what the student will have um, seen that day. So our manual is a uh, one size fits all. If you're trying to start a program at your school, please visit our website and you can um, take a look at our manual. Okay. And I know the big question was what was done over quarantine? So unfortunately, students were not in school, schools were closed, but the LA Trust really wanted to continue our oral health education. What can we do to prevent our students from um, getting cavities over this whole pandemic? They were at home for over a year. Um, and we know like the if they're at home, they're snacking. I have two little ones and all day I'm like, they were just snacking on one thing after another. And we know the acid activity in their mouth. So we can already see, um, thinking of how many students are gonna have more cavities just from being at home all this time snacking. So the LA Trust um, created three dental videos. So we have oral health videos that were created. One of them is brushing with Billy, flossing with Billy, and then healthy eating with Billy. So these videos were created. Our population target is elementary schools. Mostly we focus on our kindergartens, but these videos were created. We shared them. Um, these videos were created for through COVID for the lockdown. Three videos were shared with LAUSD. LAUSD has a direct TV channel, KLCS. One minute videos, um, these one minute videos were aired more than 150 times and we have 1.1 million um, times were viewed. So these videos again were shared with 18 um, early education centers within local district south. And um, we also have another partnership with Queens Care where we educated nine different schools. All these videos were shared with these schools. The schools are amazing at sharing them in their platform with their teachers. Um, a lot of the teachers have mentioned that they share the videos with the with the parents. The parents are able to share these videos. They're just one minute videos. And the more the students see the videos, the more they're reminded about the importance of brushing their teeth. Um, about in our videos, we talk about our magic number is number two. So it just emphasizing brushing two times a day for two minutes, visiting the dentist twice a year. So this is what, what our goal was. During COVID, we wanted to make sure our students were also informed, reminded that even though they're at home, the importance of brushing their teeth. Right now, luckily we're back in schools. And just yesterday I was at a school um, and I was mentioning to the students the importance of brushing their teeth. And a little girl said, I don't brush my teeth on the weekends. I don't go to school. So imagine that whole time that the students were not going to school if they were not brushing their teeth. So I always emphasize we brush our teeth seven days a week, Sunday through Saturday. So making sure they're brushing every day and um, twice a week. Our magic number is number two. And our videos have been so popular that I've been in so many different schools. And just a few weeks ago, I was at, at a school walking from one classroom to another and a little boy stops me in the playground and he's like, I know you, I saw you on TV. So like, of course I'm wearing my mask, so it's hard for them to recognize me, but they recognize my puppet, my um, Billy. So a lot of the students um, have seen these videos and that makes me really happy to see that they're watching the videos. Um, just yesterday I was in a classroom and a little boy tells me, 
how can you be in our school when I saw you on TV? And I told them, like, your school is special, and I'm here to show you how to brush your teeth. And they remember, they're like, but the magic number is two. So it's really um, nice to be able to see that our videos are out there. The students are watching the videos. Um, the teachers have um, a lot of the schools are putting them on their Schoology platform. So they're available for, for the students, for the teachers, for the families to share. Okay. Um, so during the COVID time and the lockdown, the LA Trust also created a multimedia oral health toolkit. This toolkit features links to oral health videos. So we created videos, the three videos that I mentioned, but we also created PowerPoint presentations for early elementary, for middle school and high school students. So all that information is in our toolkit. Um, and Kelly has a link, she's gonna put it in the chat if you guys are interested in checking out our toolkit. Our toolkit also has dental referral cards for LAUSD uh, for each local district. So we have local district south, local district central, north and west. So referral cards, our referral cards are updated every summer. So we make sure that the dental providers are still active, that they're taking Medi-Cal, that they're seeing um, children. So um, that's in our referral um, and oral health toolkit. We also have state oral health assistant programs and a lot more information. So please check out our oral health toolkit. This toolkit was created to uh, address the barriers of oral health access through that um, that was experienced by many students during the pandemic. This toolkit has information for community on the why, how, and where we can get access to um, to our dental clinics. LAUSD and the LA Trust work really closely with the wellness center. So our main focus is try to, re to refer our students to our wellness centers, but our referral cards also have dental providers in the areas for each of the schools. Okay, and I know I mentioned earlier about our data. So I wanna share um, a bit about our data exchange. So the LA Trust has this amazing um, platform where we can keep data for the for this is for our dental our data exchange um, accumulates data for all our different programs but here I'm sharing the dental from 2019 to 2020 so this information is shared from our wellness centers we're able to pull reports um, with these reports we're able to, to track the utilization for our dental the work that our dental students that our um, students are getting for dental we're able to track untreated caries and by having these reports we're able to track down um, and see the rates of absenteeism and here from this report you're able to see the number of encounters so uh, how many students are getting dental work the number of unique patients so how many students have seen the dentist more than one time with our report we are able to see how many students by gender so here we see that more we see more females than males getting dental work we're able to also pull reports by their age. So we see that the age from um, 19 to 44 is the, more, the students that are getting more of the work. On the right-hand side, types of dental services that are being offered at these um, wellness centers and oral health education is the number one. So we're really excited that oral health education is being done with our students. Like I mentioned, oral health is preventable and we wanna make sure we're educating our students on how to prevent decay, what causes cavities, what can they do to reduce that acid buildup in their mouth to prevent these cavities. And so our data exchange, we're really proud of having this platform that's able to pull these reports. We can share with our schools, we can share with our community um, and see the impact that our dentists are doing. And one last event that I want to share that the LA Trust puts together is our Tooth Fairy Convention. So we've had our Tooth Fairy Convention. This event is an amazing event where we bring together um, providers from our wellness centers, Dr. Wong on the lower left. We have um, providers that have come out. They, we screen um, our students, our children's parents, the community. Everyone's able to get free dental screenings last year, the, sorry, the year before COVID. We partnered with LAUSD and we um, had our Tooth Fairy Convention in LAUSD Wellness Fair, the 5K. Um, so this is an event that we had at Dodger Stadium. We were also really lucky to partner with Sesame Street. So we had Cookie Monster come out. The students loved Cookie Monster, being able to take pictures of him. 
Um, but the most important part is our dental screenings. We're able to have screenings, like I mentioned, for our students. The communities out, um, we screen hundreds of students. We're able to provide fluoride varnish on their teeth. And it's a fun event for the family. There's arts and crafts. Um, here we have, you can see in our picture, we had our otter. So we had Potter the otter drinks water. So we had a table where we, the students were able to come and hear a story about the importance of drinking water and how that prevents dental decay. So just an amazing event. This event was started, like I mentioned at the beginning, our dental, our dental screening programs emphasize a lot with our parent volunteers. So we've started our Tooth Fairy Convention to honor our parents and to thank them for all the work that they do in the schools and supporting us in our dental screenings. Okay, and just a little uh, more information on success and next steps. So the LA Trust has been able to establish our oral health initiative with an LAUSD. Um, this was started in January of 2017. Uh, we, in 2020, February 2020, the opt-out consent was approved. So that's another big goal that we're really proud of. The toolkits and videos that were developed during quarantine, during the pandemic, the LHO was able to distribute 800,000 um, in oral health supplies. And we did this by providing um, toothbrushes and toothpaste. We had tooth fairy events where we went into the grab and goes. A lot of the parents were coming to the different schools to um, get their lunch, their breakfast. So we were there at those events, passing out toothbrushes, passing out um, toothpaste, informing the students about the importance of continuing to brush, even though they were not coming to school. So this was a big um, event that we did throughout quarantine at different schools, just coming out, distributing toothbrushes, distributing oral health education to our families, to our communities. And um, next steps and looking forward into what the LA Trust is um, going to be doing next. So our next big project is we are going to focus on the kindergarten mandate um, reporting. So we want to see what the with 28 different districts in LA County are doing. How are they reporting? Um, I, we know that there's so many programs out there that do dental screenings, but we wanna see how the schools are reporting um, the kindergarten mandate forms. We wanna see the challenges that schools are having in reporting these forms. So that's this is our next big project that the LA Trust is gonna be working on with 28 school districts, with um, all the kindergarten schools and finding out how the um, mandate forms are being reported. Okay. Um, thank you again for joining our presentation. Here's a little bit of information. If you have any questions with our toolkit, with our oral health manual, please feel free to email me. Um, you can email the LA Trust. We have our Twitter account with our Instagram and our Facebook where we post a lot of oral health information. So again, thank you for joining us. We hope you enjoyed our presentation. And now I would like to pass it on to our amazing Dr. Wong. All right. Hello. Thank you, Esther. Good morning, everyone. My name is Ryan Huang, and I'm the dental director at South Central Family Health Center. From the presentations before me, you've learned about all the great school wellness programs. And today, I'd like to share with you all about our school wellness center. Next slide. Uh, but first, I'd like to share about my organization. We are a federally qualified health center, FQHC, which means we are a clinic that provides comprehensive primary and preventive care to patients of all ages in underserved and rural areas. We are required to provide access to primary medical, dental, and behavioral health services. And we accept patients based on medical need and regardless of their ability to pay. We have been serving the South Central Los Angeles area for over 40 years. On top of the three uh, major cornerstones of service, we also have just recently added a full optometry program. Next slide. We have a total of 10 medical sites, three of which have dental clinics within the same building. Two of the 10 sites are school-based wellness centers, which are located on the campuses of the schools that we serve. And on top of our vision care center, we also have an on-site pharmacy and a mobile van unit. Next slide. So we serve a very unique population, mostly low-income, predominantly Hispanic community, 
but has changed over the years as the South Central Los Angeles population was much more eclectic when our clinic first opened in the 1970s. It is a densely populated area, around 100,000 people, packed into this one square mile in which we operate. And some of the population is considered transient, meaning that some of the community makes South Central Los Angeles a temporary home or a stop, and for many, uh, residence is not permanent. And in our community, access to medical and dental care continues to be a significant need. Next slide. So some data I'd like to share. The Centers of Medicare and Medicaid Services, uh, CMS recommends a ratio of one provider for every 1,500 patients. And the California Office of Statewide Health Planning and Development, OSHPOD, defines a geographic area in high need if a ratio of one provider exceeds over 4,000 patients. In our geographic area, most dental providers are community health centers like us or the local dental schools, as you cannot find many dental offices compared to most communities with a population density like ours. Next slide. So in South Central Los Angeles, we have a ratio of less than one provider per 10,000 people, which makes the area where we work very underserved and also called a dental desert. There are insufficient dental services, high population density and low median household income. Thus, 80% of our patient population falls below the federal poverty level and qualify for Medi-Cal insurance. Sorry if the map is not very clear, but we are located in the cluster of yellow squares in the center area where you can see that there's a significant area of Los Angeles where there's less access to dental services. Next slide. Now, even though our organization has been around for 40 years, we did not start providing dental services until 2013. We received a federal grant from HRSA, the Health uh, Resources and Services Administration, to create our first dental site, which was our school-based wellness center at Jefferson High School. It was originally planned for just medical services, but given the overwhelming need for oral health services, among our existing patient population, we were able to partner with the uh, LAUSD, the LA Unified School District, to create a comprehensive health center with the main purpose of providing a medical and dental home for students and their families. Next slide. So thus, our Jefferson Wellness Center was born. We started with two dental chairs and four medical, medical exam rooms. Uh, we provided comprehensive dental services, our medical department provided sports physicals, vaccinations, and confidential services to students. Our behavioral health team provided counseling services. While our intent was clear for the wellness center to provide primarily serve students, our patients discovered our dental clinic and the clinic became overwhelmed with patients wanting dental services. So we ended up evolving into serving both the student population as well as our health center patients. Next slide. The goals for our wellness center were quite focused. We wanted to integrate medical, dental, and mental health services for the student population. With our wellness center on the campus grounds, students were given tours of our clinics to show them that our clinic was available to them. And our partnership with Health Healthy Start counselors and school nurses helped increase health awareness for the high school students. Throughout the academic year, we would partner and run educational fairs and conduct oral health screenings on school grounds during school hours in conjunction with Esther's organization, the LA Trust. We also participated in screening events at the surrounding feeder school, primary schools for the kindergarten mandate, which Esther also mentioned earlier. Uh, next slide. So I just want to share what uh, one of our dental operatories looks like in the wellness center. There is a misconception that community health centers do not look as nice as private offices or use, they use donated or secondhand equipment, but I'd like to dispel that notion right here, here and now. Within our budget, we were able to purchase brand new equipment, dental chairs, vacuum and compressor, x-ray machines to build out our dental clinic. We used our funding to purchase state-of-the-art equipment as our patients not only deserve to be provided high-quality dentistry from my team, but also have the comfort knowing that we are using the best equipment to help them improve their oral health. 
Of course, we value the safety of our patients and staff first. And as with all health centers, we are required to follow the highly regulated and enforced infection control protocol in our clinics. Next slide. So running a wellness center is not easy as we have some challenges too. Um, as uh, Paula touched on this topic earlier, and the first is the active consent law in the LEUSD, which requires active consent from parents and guardians prior to having dental services done on minors. So if a student under 18 years old walks into our clinic with dental pain from the school, we cannot legally provide care until we have a parent guardian uh, give in-person signed consent, which kind of interrupts the de delivery of dental care. Other medical and mental health services can be done with passive consent, which pres presently allows those services to be provided right away. Another challenge is that we have a high no-show and broken appointment rates in our clinics, and compliance with treatment recommendations is an ongoing struggle. Part of it has to do with the transient population where people are here but then are gone and then maybe eventually come back. Um, we also have uh, difficulty in completing patient treatment plans as a result. And there continues to be a lack of education for the community on the benefits of Medi-Cal insurance. So some of the South Los Angeles population still have not accessed health services despite being qualified for Medi-Cal. Uh, next slide. So I want to just share what happened to us during the COVID pandemic. Uh, when it started in March of last year, the CDC essentially shut down dentistry across the nation because of the possible risks of airborne transmission of COVID-19 through dental services, like drilling and fillings and cleanings. So we ourselves were limited to providing uh, emergency care only. We saw many families keep children at home and postpone routine dental care until conditions improved. Uh, we also conducted consultations through telehealth during the pandemic. Uh, we were recommended to use more personal protective equipment, PPE, such as N95 masks and face shields to protect ourselves while we provided high risk treatment. But in dentistry, we were already complying to the high standard of PPE. Um, you can see that we improvised on how we were able to create safe, isolated environments for our patients and staff. Um, so we improvised in our dental clinics. If you look at the picture, yes, that is a shower curtain and a pole that I bought and eventually cleaned out from all my local Ace Hardware stores to equip our 20 dental chairs. <coughs> that was my version of panic buying during the pandemic. Uh, next slide. We also purchased HEPA filters and uh, extra oral suction units to rid of excess aerosol particles. And we built acrylic barriers for our front office to protect our staff. And all of these are still in use today because the pandemic is not yet over. Next slide. As time went by, you know, research, recent research has shown that dental procedures have not correlated with higher COVID-19 infection rates and we eventually came back to reopen sites and began to provide more and more services that we had temporarily suspended, <coughs> excuse me, like fillings and deep cleanings. We required our patients to furnish negative COVID tests before we could provide high-risk procedures. And by tw January, 2021, we lifted all restrictions for procedures as patients and employees were able to be vaccinated earlier this year. As more and more people get vaccinated, including teenagers in our high schools, and soon with school-aged children, we hope that um, we can find normalcy back in dentistry. Uh, next slide. Our goals for the future. We want to continue to innovate and evolve within the comprehensive healthcare model, integrate between programs such as linking pediatric care with dental care in a same-day visit, educating patients on the links between diabetes or prenatal care with oral health. And our newest bridge will be finding common ground with our mental and dental health teams, tying substance abuse and mental health, such as depression and anxiety on the maintenance of oral health. <laughs> Excuse me, uh, next slide. So I'd like to thank the LAUSD and LA Trust for their partnerships within the school community and with the UCLA School of Dentistry 
we're able to provide dental specialty services at our clinic, such as pediatric, root canal specialty, and oral surgery. With all these organizations, we can continue providing optimal healthcare services to the South Central Los Angeles community. The partnerships are clearly very valuable to our organization, and the results are testament to our dedication and commitment to our community. Next slide. What does the future hold for us at the Jefferson Wellness Center? Well, we hope to utilize our mobile van unit as schools are opening up in person again and restart our oral health screening programs with the LA Trust. We would also like to bolster our preventative oral health programs such as applying fluoride and placing dental sealants in the schools or eventually with our mobile van unit. But right now, we continue to educate the community on the importance of getting vaccinated for COVID-19. And we look forward to our new wellness center building that will be developed in 2024 that will be bigger and better to not only serve the school system, but create more access points for the South Central Los Angeles communities, which we continue to serve with loving and open arms. Next slide. Thank you very much for allowing me to present to you all today. And my email is here if you have any further questions. Thank you. Thank you everyone for attending this uh, presentation. Please don't forget to complete your evaluation at the end of the day. And that's how, um, you know, we, you know, the California School Based Health Alliance will know how to improve. And also each evaluation is worth 50 points. Um, so submit your chance to win the raffle. Again, thank you so much for our presenters today for this amazing presentation.